consider the function defined as follows. So f of x is equal to 1 if x is rational, and it's equal to 0 if x is irrational. In this problem, I forgot to write the question down, we're going to prove f is not continuous anywhere. So we're going to show it's discontinuous at every single real number. Pretty incredible. So proof. And by the way, this is sometimes called uh, Dirichlet's function. Okay, so to prove it's not continuous anywhere, we're going to use a proof by contradiction. We're going to suppose it's continuous. So suppose f is continuous at a. And a here is just some real number. So if we can prove that we have a contradiction, then we're done and we sh we're sh we've shown that it can't be continuous anywhere. So set epsilon equal to 1. And then because f is continuous at a, that means there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for every real number x with the absolute value of x minus a less than delta, we have the absolute value of f of x minus f of a less than 1, right? Because epsilon is our 1. So all we've done is we've used the definition of continuity with epsilon equal to 1. So now let's just be really, really careful. First, let's look at this condition here. What does this mean in interval notation? So let's go to the side, and not part of the proof, but just to think about what this means. So if you have this, this is the same thing as saying the distance between x minus a and 0 is smaller than delta. So that means x minus a is a number between delta and negative delta. In other words, adding a to all three sides, x is less than delta plus a, and less than a minus delta. Uh, written in a nicer way, maybe we can write it as a plus delta and a minus delta. So in other words, x is in the interval a minus delta, a plus delta. So this condition here that's being circled can be written uh, like that. Okay, so now we're going to take cases. So if a is, I guess let's do rational first. So if a is rational, then let's think about what that means for f of a. Well, if a is rational, then looks like it's going to be equal to 1. So then f of a is equal to 1. That means up here in this inequality, we're going to have a 1 where the f of a is. So it would be really nice if the f of x was 0, and that way we could reach a contradiction. Well, we can make it zero. So by the so to make it zero, we want x to be irrational. So by the density of the irrationals, we can pick some number x in the interval a minus delta a plus delta. We can certainly find an irrational number between the numbers a minus delta and a plus delta. And that means that this condition is satisfied. And that means that this inequality holds. So that means that f of x is equal to 0. Hence, when we look at this condition, let's see, we have f of x minus f of a. And that's less than 1 because x lies in this interval. Well, f of x is 0, so we have 0 minus, and then f of a is 1. And this is less than 1. And this is just the absolute value of negative 1, and that's less than 1. So 1 is less than 1, a contradiction. Now we can play the same game by taking the other case. So we've covered the case when a is rational. So if a is irrational, then, well, when a is irrational, let's scroll back up, 
if a is irrational, f of a is 0. So then f of a is equal to 0. Let me go ahead and write the function here again so we can see it. It's 1 if x is rational and 0 if x is irrational. There we go. So if a is irrational, then f of a is equal to 0. So looking at this inequality, if f of a is 0, we want f of x to be 1. So then, by the density of the rationals, pick x in this interval that is rational. So we're picking an x that's rational. I didn't write it. I'm just saying it, I guess. So pick an x that's rational. So that means that f of x is equal to 1. And so then, when we look at this difference, f of x minus f of a, this is less than 1, we know that f of x is 1 and f of a is 0. So 1 minus 0, less than 1. So 1 less than 1, a contradiction. So in either case, we have a contradiction. So I hope that made sense.